Hallelujah. Come on, he's ready to give God some praise this morning. Let's praise the one that created us and worship. Come on. I know what it's called. This is amazing, great. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love's mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth? With holy thunder, who leaves his breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross.
earth is yours, Lord. Worship him right now.
Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, sing that again.
There's nothing and no one like you and nothing else matters. Hallelujah. All over this room, would you do something? Would you just lift your hands just as a point of surrender to the Lord? Say, I don't know how to do it, but I want you to be the full and complete center of my life. Jesus, be the center of this church. Baskin is with us this morning. Go ahead and minister to us. Sing to you. 
your king and dance before me always I am your heart and I love you only you are my joy it's time to be free you are the light you are my praise oh oh I've shattered the darkness I've got you in this world to me. Higher than the mountains that I face, stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change, this one thing remains. Higher than the mountains that I face, stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change, this one thing remains. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out. today to beat it. <laughs> it's not going to beat us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I was just thinking, how many times have I found myself in a place where it just seems like no matter what I do, I can't seem to get over it. You know what I'm talking about? You know those walls that come and and we push against them, we hit against them until we're so tired we just kind of lean on them. <laughs> we get tired of it. You know? I'm, I'm not the only one in here, I don't think so. And it's when we come to those moments that we realize we need a Savior. <laughs> we should realize it before then, but especially then we realize. We can't 
have victory without him. We're not supposed to have victory without him. We're not supposed to be strong enough to beat the devil without him. With him, in him, through him. We can do all things. Faith understands that, the promise in the word. It's those moments when our faith seems small and the light is dim. When it feels like the whole world is too hard, we need to know how to yield ourselves and give up, not press hard or give up. Some of us have worn ourselves out trying to press through what we were never meant to do. Jesus be the center because your love will never fail and it is that knowledge that sure knowledge that allows me to be weak and to glory in my weakness that he is strong and shows himself strong on our behalf amen so today we're going to rest in that we're just going to rest in the peace of that knowledge that our God is more than enough and he will do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think. <laughs> that there's nobody like him in all the earth. He does own all the hills and the cattle on those hills. That he's our strong tower. He really is. We can abide in him. It's an amazing, amazing grace and truth that we live in today. Just take a moment and just say Here's all of my walls. Here's all of my, everything that resists me. Here it all is, Lord. It's yours. I believe there's a breaker anointing in this house today. But the breaker anointing is the breaker himself. His name is Jesus. <laughs> he died for our sins. He was resurrected. In, and in, in our Redeemer lives. And because of that, He'll break through. He's going to bust through everything. I mean, there's nothing too hard for him this morning. I just release. Come on, just release. Release it. Hallelujah. He's my God. He's not just our God. He's my God this morning. Amen. I want you to find somebody this morning and say, He is God all the time. Good morning, Epic family and guests, and thank you for joining us today. If you are a first-time guest, please fill out the connection card located in the seat pocket in front of you. For more information about how to get involved, please visit our website at epiclakeland.com. There are three ways for you to connect for prayer here at Epic Church. One, call your life group leader. Two, fill out the connection card. Or three, email us at info at epiclakeland.com with prayer requests in the subject line. This is what's happening this week at the Epicenter.
Now. Man. Good morning, people of God. Let's give the Lord a good hand for his awesomeness. If he's awesome and been awesome to you, just give him a great big hand. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm going to ask that we prepare ourselves for offering. And uh, we take our tithe first. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. As you get your tithe ready, just your tithe. We'll do our offering separate. But the tithe is what we present to the Lord because, see, the tithe already has a name on it, and it's God's. All right? It already He's already determined what you're going to give, a tenth of everything that he's given you. So it's not like you're doing anything special other than obeying, which is very special. So, so uh, the, the important thing is to know that obedience to God on the other side of that is your miracle. I say it again. Obedience to God on the other side of your obedience is your miracle. The Bible says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Now, when I say how long, you tell me forever, all right? Let Israel now say that his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. All right. Let the house of Aaron, the priesthood, now say that his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Let those who reverently and worshipfully fear the Lord say that his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I'll say that again. The Lord is on your side. You have no reason to fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side and takes my part. He is among those who help me. Therefore shall I see my desire established upon those who hate me. Verse 8, it is better to trust and take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now I'm going to look at verse 25 because this is where I'm going to today. I am going to bless you in the name of the Lord. I'm going to bless you by pronouncing and announcing God's favor over you, his prosperity. But in verse 23, it says, 25, rather, it says, Save now, we beseech you, O Lord. Send now prosperity, O Lord. We beseech you and give us success. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Now, for those of you that have your tithe, would you please come forward with your tithe? This is amazing grace This is a failing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing you've done for me. Amen, amen, amen. Now for those of us who have our offering ready, get it ready, get excited, because this is your free will offering. This is your will, be showing God your will to give. As you get it ready, I've got, I want to make this resolution over you. I want you to listen carefully. If this is still the time, then go ahead and bring it down. But wait for the offering. Wait a minute. It says, Lord, Send your rain at the proper time from your rich treasury in heavens to bless all the work we do. May we lend to others but never need to borrow from them. Lord, we will be careful to obey your commands according to your word. Make us the head and not the tail. And always give us the upper hand. And always give us the upper hand. And the church said, now bring your tithe joyfully in your offering, brother. Do you want to bring another tithe? Go ahead. Take my place 
you've done for me. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward so we can pray over today's tithe and offering. And I, I've had the distinct privilege of seeing God do something that I know that, that is not normal in the church. And about 20, 25 years ago, in our church, we, we, we gave what was called, I can't believe I gave the whole thing Sunday. Yeah, don't get nervous. We're not going to ask you to do that. But I want you to know that, that we did that in Olean, New York, population of 18,000. So you didn't do it here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing was, when we did that, the testimonies that came in was, were like this. I, landowners, right? They were able to sell their property. They hadn't been on sale for a long time. They got more than they expected from that. No, nobody that turned in their offering that day, their whole check, that they are not having. I mean, it was just glorious. And guess what? We had over $5,000 above what we normally raise in that, on any given Sunday. Amen. And it was a Methodist pastor that told us to do it. And we just believed it, and God blessed. Father, we thank you that, that you are a giver, Lord. You outgive us all, Lord. You gave your only son for us to have life. And now, Lord, today, we are honoring you, and we are saying thank you for your provisions. Lord, we're thanking you for the provisions that we'll need tomorrow and even next year because we know you're good for it, Lord. We know you have our back, and you are among those that trust you, Lord. You stand in the midst of any fire that we go through. You are in the flood that we endure because you are our God. So, Father, bless this offering. Let it be a joy to you, Father, because we've given from our hearts and we've done it with cheer. And the people of God said, Amen. I have to believe that he sees my darkness. I have to believe he knows my pain. I have to lift up my hands to worship, worship his name. I
Hallelujah. <laughs> we had a glorious homegoing service yesterday. This way. Um, Sheila Williams, um, her son went home to be with the Lord a couple of weeks ago, and um, yesterday was the homegoing service, and Sheila's with us this morning. Uh, she just joined Epic Church, and we are so grateful. Uh, a strong woman of God, and um, amen. And we are believing with her. I wanted them to do that song this morning for you, Sheila, and for uh, Darby, whose mother went home to be with the Lord, for all of you who every day of your lives get up and you have to believe. I, I think there's somewhere on the face of the earth where people just get up and live and everything goes well. I'm not sure where that place is. But I know for all of us every day, we make a choice every day how we're going to live, how we're going to navigate that day. Am I going to do this angry? Am I going to do this yielded? Am I going to do... Th you know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, we call it moods, but it's bigger than moods. It really is all about a decision. And the, and the truth is, at the end of the day, I don't have anything else but him. So I have to believe. I, I lived the other way, and I found out that I had to believe. Because it's never wrong to believe God. No matter what, it's never wrong to believe God. So today, to all of those who get up every day of their lives and say, today I have to believe, I wanted you to hear that this morning and be strengthened. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy uh, hearing uh, Brother Paul this morning on the keyboard? <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you a little story about him now. Um, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to rich back, rich back in, into the... <laughs> we, we have history. Um, years ago, some of you have, don't even know that actually uh, I kind of started out in ministry as a singer. And, um, and so I recorded a few projects. And uh, the... the one that I did that most of you might know about is the one uh, is called In the Secret Place. And, um, and Paul Baskin wrote most of the songs on that, that uh, CD and produced that for me. He, he stood on the other side while I freaked out on this side uh, recording and uh, kept me calm and saw me through it and plays the keyboard and coached me and made and, and brought that thing uh, into fruition and uh, lives in Texas, travels all over the world, uh, greatly used by God, as you can see. And uh, we just got surprised this week. Uh, they came and visited us from Texas. And so I'm excited that he's here. And his beautiful wife, Debbie, whom uh, I knew first, Debbie first, she was a good little Church of Christ girl. <laughs> and uh, and uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, wanted to worship. And in their particular denomination, in their belief system, uh, they don't have instruments in their, in their church. And, uh, and so she was a worshiper. And so she was trying to figure out how to stay Church of Christ and, and still worship God. And so she decided to have a, a praise and worship conference and invited me to speak. <laughs> Needless to say, her days at the Church of Christ were over. <laughs> Uh, so we go back many, many years, and uh, I'm very excited because tonight, tonight, yay, this is day 21 of the fast, the, of the Daniel fast, amen, and, um, and tonight we are going to meet together, and we're having a big worship time together and hearing what the Lord has said to us during these 21 days. Now, if you have not fasted all 21 days or any of the 21 days, you still need to be here. This is about hearing what God is saying, and, uh, and, and we're a group of people who are committed 
to the word of the Lord. Amen. And you want to be here at six o'clock tonight as well. We're going to have, uh, well, it's, there'll be food. Just let me say it that way. So there'll be food. So come, uh, you'll enjoy that. And we're excited uh, about what, uh, as you will see on the front of this, if you can see it, this says Daniel fast day 22. Where do we go from here? And this helps us. This, you'll, it, tonight we'll give these out. Uh, we'd love for you to be here. We're excited about that. And, uh, and Brother Paul will be uh, leading us in worship tonight. It's going to be a wonderful time. And I might, I might, depends if, you, if enough of you come. I may um, do a little mini concert. Very mini. on some of the stuff that I've done and recorded in the past. Wouldn't you love to, again, many. <laughs> amen. I know. A br- <laughs> you know Brother Larry. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. And I know immediately following service today, there will be, um, for our, our Easter production, there's a uh, cast, all cast call or whatever. Uh, you need to be here. If you can do anything or are interested at all, be a part of that. It's an exciting thing. You can look around you and see that we are, in essence, full in this room. And, uh, and we are grateful that God continues to bless us. And we're looking forward to expansion in God. Amen. Today... is your day of deliverance. Here's what I know. You know, there's a lot of things I don't know, but there's some things I know. Here's what I know. I know that when we are born again, when we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, we get a lot more of benefits than we take advantage of. The psalmist said, I'll not forget your benefits, and yet we do forget his benefits often. And, and for us, freedom becomes a catch word or phrase instead of becoming the reality that Jesus died to give us. Freedom isn't just about feeling better. Freedom is, the, is what was purchased for us yes. by the blood. Amen. Amen. Yes. And as, as people who are free, then we are free to be and to become. That's the reason freedom is so important, because salvation uh, deals with our past, but it gives us back our future. When we are born again, our past is dealt with. It goes under the blood. We know that to be a fact, right? As far as the east is from the west, that's how he deals with our sin. So when we are born again, we, we are translated into a different kingdom, into a different realm. We come out of the realm of, of sin and death, and we come in. To the, to the kingdom of the son of his love and the son of his light. That's what happens. Literally, we are translated. We go from one place to another. Now, there are behaviors that are common to both realms. We know the behaviors that are common to the realm of sin and death. We've lived them. We've lived them and know them well. They're the behaviors that bring us into bondage. They're the behaviors that, that bring us into defeat. You know, the, the kinds of thing we can't, you know, the, the monkey gets on your back and you can't get the monkey off your back, right? That's what happens in that realm. Now, there are behaviors in this realm that are also common and should be more common. In this realm, we become a people who are no longer subject to the old law of sin and death. We become overcomers. Here we are overcome, and here we are overcomers. It's amazing. And what happens to us is when we come into this realm, when we are translated into this realm by the power of God, we now have at our disposal all that we need all that we need to walk in godliness, to walk holy, to walk free, to walk healed. It may seem a little simplistic, but it's really the truth. We, we complicate things too much. And when we live in the behaviors of that realm over in this realm, it just doesn't make sense. 
So we're constantly in this struggle in our mind and in our soul. How do I, how do I walk free as an overcomer? And yet I'm still messing around in these behaviors. Amen. God wants us to be free. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So I'm, it's very clear to me that even in my freedom, I can go back into the yoke of bondage. So whatever it is that's been your chronic issue, because everybody has one, two, three, four, five. It's a cycle we continually find ourselves in. By the way, good to have you back, Bob Good, back with us. I had surgery and so glad to have you back in service this morning. He's been supernaturally healed in so many different ways, and we're so grateful to have you here. So what do I do? Do I learn how to live in the yoke of bondage? We shouldn't. But what do we usually do? Come on. Those chronic issues that are there, we generally will find relief. That's why corporate anointing is important. That's why you should be at church on Sundays. That's why you should be when we gather together because the corporate anointing helps to lift that burden. And there is a breaker anointing that comes in the midst of God's people. But you can't stay free unless something changes. You can get relief. Like, I'm relieved right now. I I just, I could believe God for anything right now. Because there's, there's strength. Problem is, when y'all aren't here, worship team isn't singing. Pastor Stanley's not encouraging us. Brother Larry's not shouting. I find myself in whatever those chronic issues are, I find myself being overcome by them. And church service becomes the only time I can feel good. And that's not the way it ought to be. It ought to be. We walk in this place free. I'm already free. I'm walking in free because there are others who have not yet come to that freedom. So I've got to be part of the overwhelming tide of power that gets released because I'm no longer under this this weight of bondage. You know them. You know them well. Depression. Getting real quiet in this Presbyterian church. Discouragement. Hmm. See, those are the acceptable bondages. If I said drugs, you'd go, "Mm, yes, hallelujah, we've been delivered. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. But I said depression, and y'all, nobody said a word. The lack of hope. See, that's what happens. Discouragement, depression. We have lost our hope. That's what happens. That's just it, plain and simple. Why does that happen? Because we forget we're living in this realm. We think we're still over here able to be overcome. And when you live in the behaviors of this realm, you keep getting the same fruit over and over again. Everybody see that door? Guess what? We're walking through a door today. We're walking through. And the reason why we're going to do this is it is time to serve notice on the chronic issues that hold us back and keep us from the victory of God. This isn't about circumstances. If you think you're going to walk through that door and it's a magic pill of some sort and all my circumstances are going to change, that is just forget it. Don't, Don't even try it. I want to walk through an open door that God has placed before me so that I will be changed in the midst of it. 
Honey, I want to tell you something. There are some circumstances in your life and my life that need a declaration. But when we are under the weight of all of this mess over here, we cannot rise up in faith. And that thing continues unabated. We allow that thing to happen, continue to happen. Somebody ought to get mad enough to say, enough. National, bring your Bible to church month, right? Let me just read this to you. There's stuff that happens at doors. I'm in Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to begin in verse 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. That's a first book. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time uh, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering to, uh, uh, of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was angry and his countenance fell. I'm not going to go into that whole thing because that's not what this sermon is about. I'll, I'll talk about that another time. But what I want you to see is that in this process, Cain becomes angry because he doesn't understand what's going on. And not only that, he feels slighted and the spirit of entitlement is on him. And he doesn't understand why he doesn't have the same favor as somebody else. So the Lord said to Cain, see, this is the way God is with us. We'll be in the midst of our issues. And he's doing, he's saying, hey, Shirley, Shirley, listen. He said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Now, listen, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But, but, but what does it say? But you should rule over it. <laughs> Tell you something. In this life, there is an accuser. The enemy does, he has assignments and he accuses. He has assignments that he sends against the people of God. But he also, his favorite thing is to bring accusation. And God is speaking uh, to Cain and saying, listen, Cain, listen, wait a minute. I know you're discouraged. I know right now you don't understand. I know, but you're in a dangerous spot. All right. That's right. Come on. Yeah. You got to understand that your discouragement and all the, your depression and your anger and your judgment and all those things right now, they have put you in a very, very dangerous place. Come on, if you're not careful, that, that sin is just crouching at the door. There's a door that you've opened in your life, and it's there, but, but, but it's not too late. You can rule over it. You can rule over this thing. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? I know that God is speaking to us and we find ourselves in these places and, and the enemy's voice is accusing us. You can't do this. Why did you do that? That person this and they said that. No, oh, you know, you'll always be a failure and you'll never be able to really have the breakthrough and you're never going to be really successful. You won't ever be as successful as. I wasn't chosen first. I'm, I, I'm always second choice. I, I, I'm, I'm going, the lies, the accusations. You don't have what it takes. It's over for you. And God is just yelling, Hey! You're in a dangerous place. There is sin crouching at your door. And if you don't rule over this thing, that thing is going to consume you. I love you. I love you. Pastor Stephen, I love you. But you got to understand, this is a life and death situation. So choose life. 
Stop letting the devil accuse you into a place where you choose death. That's what it comes to. You say, well, you just don't know what happened to me and where I come. I do too. I probably had it worse than you. Honestly, it's not easy. Life is not easy. But I want to tell you something. There is abundance in this life. We have an abundant life as we yield to God. Hallelujah. So I have to see depression, heaviness. Um, name some of them. Anxiety, discouragement, disappointment, fear, rejection, intimidation, shame. I have to see that as bad as the worst crack addict there is. I have to see that like I'm taking crack. When I yield myself to that, it's a sin. Be anxious for nothing. You already know that. I already know it. Why am I anxious then? Why are we popping pills? No condemnation. And I don't know who is and who isn't. And I don't know. But I know one thing. The doctors don't know what to do with all these people who are having so much anxiety. They can't find organic reasons for it. They can't do anything else but try to manage anxiety. Let's not manage anxiety. Let us be anxious for nothing. But in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God. That we become people of the book. That this word, this word is more than what I read in 21 days of fasting. The day 22 finds me back in this word. That I read the words of the psalmist. It says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I look into the hills from whence cometh my help, because my help cometh from the Lord. Again, no condemnation. If you're taking pills for anxiety, amen. I'm not telling you to stop taking anything. I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying, where do we go first? What's our go-to place? That's right. I go to the rock. Hallelujah. Listen to this, and we're going to have our moment in a moment. Psalm 8410 in the Amplified says this, and I'm going to go through these quickly. You all won't have time to look them up. They'll put them up on the screen for us, the rest of these. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a doorkeeper and stand at the threshold in the house of my God than to dwell at ease in the tents of wickedness. I've had people say to me, you know, it's harder trying to follow God than it was not following God. It's harder. Yeah, it is. Because you're fighting your flesh. And the more you fight your flesh... The more you fight your flesh, the harder it is. Now, that's the truth. No question about it. But let me tell you, there's a place in him that when you, when you ease on over. <laughs> ease on down, ease on down the rope. <laughs> the commentary on this church is if I sing any secular song, y'all all know them. I, it bothers me a lot. <laughs> There, there's when that shift begins to take place and you find yourself no longer at war with yourself. You know, forget the devil right now. Once we ease into that place of rest and we become, we, we, we find ourselves now conformed to the image of Christ. And that now the mind of Christ is as the, 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 what was hard is no longer hard. And all of that warfare is over. It's a glorious thing. But you got to fight hard to get into the rest. And you can't give up the battle. You can't give up the war. You can't do that. You are, you're a soldier. And, and you're, 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 you're a fam, we're a family first and we're soldiers second. But we are soldiers. And as soldiers, we have to fight. But we can't fight the enemy because we're so busy fighting ourselves. We turn the gun on ourselves and shoot. It's 
struggling with this old way of living and these old mindsets and the things that have held us in bondage for all these years and becoming comfortable in our bondage. This is just the way it is. It's the way it'll always be. I don't know. I just can't settle for that. I, I can't settle for that for me. I can't settle for that for you. God has done a glorious thing for us by sending his son to give us power to become the sons of God. Amen? I'd rather be a doorkeeper and stand in the threshold. I'd rather stand at the door. You know, I love that scripture. And literally, you know, I used to think the doorkeeper was like the usher. And it's really not. The doorkeepers were, were from the tribe of, of Levi. They were, they were priests. And they had to qualify to be a doorkeeper because the doorkeeper stood at the door of the temple. And when people came, they had their ceremonial washings. They had to do those things. They had to show what they were bringing to sacrifice. And they had to pay their tithe before they got in the door. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> And the doorkeeper had to be consecrated in order to consecrate. So they could not enter the doors until they were consecrated. And the doorkeeper said, who came in and who went out? You understand? The doorkeeper said, yep, you come. Mm -mm, Not you. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Why? What the statement he was making is, I would rather be consecrated and standing in the presence of God, no matter how hard it is. I want to stand. I'd rather be here as a dork. I'd rather take my place and consecrate my life and live holy and do all the things that I should do here. And I'd rather do that than go dwell in those tents, those places at ease. I'd rather do this. Yeah, it's harder to do this. It's easier to sin. (laughs) It's easy to sin because it always ministers to your carnal nature. Your carnal nature always loves to be ministered to. But now, not if you're going to be a doorkeeper. Now, now you're saying, wait a minute. This life that I have, that I've been given, I'm not about to be a doorkeeper in my life. I, I, I'm going to consecrate things. I, I'm not going to let just anything come in. I'm going to tell what can come in and what can't come in. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. You see, in the house of the Lord, amen, the temple. No, you not. No, you not. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are the temple of God. And I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness at ease. I am tired of going the path of least resistance. I'm not going to go that way just because it's easier. Now, I want to tell you something. There is evil in this world, and our nation needs a turnaround. (sighs) There are no doorkeepers anywhere. Whatever anybody wants to do is okay. And if you stand up for something, you become intolerant. And and no longer are you considered uh, someone that you can be listened to because you're intolerant. I'm not. Yes, I am intolerant. I don't tolerate sin in my life. First. I'm worried about the sin in your life. I got to worry about sin in my own. I got to be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. I have to make sure everything gets consecrated before any entrance is made. Amen? Matthew 24, Jesus said this. Learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that... (laughs) It is near at the doors. He said, listen, when you realize the signs are all there, you should know that there's something waiting at the door. You can read the signs. Now, he's talking about his coming back, you know, and his reappearing. But if you take the principle of that, what he's really saying is that when you have an expectation, And you begin to expect. And here's where the rubber meets the road for us. 
We stop expecting freedom and we start accepting mediocrity. We start living and learning how to be comfortable in it because to fight it is too hard. And therefore, with no the le- the path of least resistance, we don't so we no longer expect we say, you saw it at the beginning of the uh, video announcements, this is a place for miracles and breakthroughs happen here. We speak that. Why? Because we believe and expect that that is true. The reason I make declarations and call those things that are not as though they were is because I have an expectation that they are. That when I say by his stripes I'm healed, I, I, I make that statement. Perhaps I don't see the full manifestation of it, but I have an expectation that it already exists. My healing already exists. I don't think I have to beg God and he has to make something up. I think it was already done. When he took the stripes on his back, he, he settled the issue. He said, by my stripes, you're healed. And so when I hear that, my expectation is that I'll be healed. So I make declaration. I have an expectation. When you see the signs, now I don't know about you, but he, listen, I, I'm, <laughs> he brought me out of darkness. He brought me out of, out of alcoholism and manic depression and mess, mess, mess. He turned my life around until he filled my mouth with singing. He put his word inside of me. He changed my life. He saved my marriage. He, 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 He healed my body. So I have a certain expectation that the same God who brought me out of that can bring me into anything that he has for my life. So my faith is based in an expectation that God's word is true and that he is, he is, and he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I have an expectation. See, at my door that's open for me, it's, it's a door that I can walk through because I expect that as I walk through that door, God has already beat me to the other side. <laughs> That I'm not walking with, I'm walking into something. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, do you remember what God said? I brought you out in order to bring you in. God doesn't just bring you out. He wants to bring you in. And so going through the door of opportunity or whatever that door is, we do that with the expectation that we are coming into God's plan, God's purpose, God's power. Amen. Amen. Some of us have suffered through the agony of defeat and have taken on that spirit of defeat to such a degree that we don't even expect to win. We don't even expect to be changed anymore. We just learn to tolerate Isaiah 22, 22. The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. This is the messianic prophecy. So he shall open and no one shall shut. He shall shut and no one shall open. Matthew 16, 19. This is spoken to us. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Here's the deal. Just go over there for me and open that door. Here's the thing. The doors that God has opened are already open. When John heard the word of God in Revelation, wherever that is, chapter 4, I believe, and he says he heard, he heard this voice saying that a door opened in heaven. And he heard a voice saying, come up here, come up higher. The door is already open. Everybody, the door's already open. If you think you've got to go bang on the door to try to get it open, then you're living in another dispensation. Because Jesus is the door. He has opened the door that no man can shut. But the things that... May I walk down? Am I going to be in trouble if I do? I didn't ask. Thank you. Yeah, this is so heavy. They could put this up here. But, see, here's the problem. I stand at the door and say, 
freedom. I need freedom. And we pound on this door. Oh, God, help me get free. And the problem is this door is already open. Come on. But we're still trying to get free. And so we're at this imaginary door. We're saying, huh, I need to get free. I need. It. And he said, uh, uh, I've opened a door no man can close. Wait a minute. What are you saying? In other words, I stand on the outside of my freedom because I am bound with unbelief. And now the liar has planted a lie in my mind. And I believe that I can't get through the door. The problem is not opening the door. The problem is walking through the door. Woo, I felt something. That was good. <laughs> can't wait for y'all. <laughs> Last week I talked to you about, about you remember uh, how Moses and, and Joshua would walk through the uh, camp and all of the, all of the people that, you know, it said anyone who wanted to serve, who wanted to worship the Lord could walk, you know, uh, up to the tent of meeting, but only Moses and Joshua would go. Now everybody else, they would come in <laughs> they'd stand in the doorway of their tent yeah. and they'd watch. Whoo, look at, look at the glory of God. Wow. Look at the glory of God. Oh, here comes the cloud. Oh, my good glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, they needed to get up and go to the doorway. They needed to leave their doorway and get to the doorway of God. Because as long as you stand in this place and you hold on to it, you are stuck. Stuck right here. Just stuck, stuck, stuck. I hate that feeling. I can't make a difference. I can't change anything. I can't do anything. It's just, you know, I have to learn how to live with this. And, you know, praise God. And, you know, we, we, we think we're people of faith. You know, well, we are sometimes. Most times, hopefully. But the truth is, this is why those old songs, you know, we in the Baptist church that I came from, this is what we did, you know. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Because we're so tired, we don't see a way out. It's got to come someday. We, we don't see as today is the day. We don't, someday we'll make it. Well, someday we'll get there. Someday you'll be free. Someday, I'm telling you, today is the day. So we have a door here. This is what life feels like, this. This is what it feels like. Tell the truth. Feels like your opportunities are limited. Feels like that no matter what you do, it doesn't seem to make a change. And before you know it, you have settled into that thing because you're tired of fighting. Today. I pray you get your fight back. I pray, I don't know. Listen, let me tell you, let me tell you stuff's on this side of the door. It's worth going through. Because on that side of the door, listen, power, deliverance, healing for your body, healing for your soul, hope. You know, it's what Jesus said. I mean, what was said about Jesus. Isaiah said it, and he said that, that he would, you know, you'd put on a garment of praise instead of a spirit of, have, on this side, there's different garments. They're different clothes. You don't, even, you don't dress the same on that side of the door. I, I put on something different. I, I'm not wearing the same thing. Yeah, I might go in wearing one thing, but I'm going to come out this side of this door. I'm going to be wearing something else. I, I'm putting a garment of praise on because the spirit of heaviness has just about killed me. How about you? You know what I'm going to do? You know, when I get on the other side of here, you know, something's going something's to spring up out of me. A well in me is going to start just... Yeah, you mean where, where it's just been felt like everything was dammed up on the inside of me and I couldn't get it out and I wanted to praise, but it didn't feel like it went any higher than my mouth and, you know, my worship has been stunned. On the other side over here, there's a well. Got right over here, just right here. There's a well 
of worship. There's a wellspring that begins to spring up on the inside of us that makes us raise our hands and praise the Lord when we get bad news, that helps us to be overcomers when it's not easy to overcome, that allows us to straighten things out, you know? You know what I'm talking about, where you feel like it's gone crooked because you don't know what to do next, and, and our path seems to be, we're off, off the path, you know? It, 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 we're, we're, we think we're going, we're, we're trying to go nice and straight, and before you know it, the path starts getting more crooked. So where, how, how did I get here? Wait a minute. What am I doing? You know, that happened to David. Sin will bring you there. Happened to David. But you know what happened to him, too? Even in the midst of his sorrow, he began to declare, I will once again lead the worshiping throng. Doesn't matter that right now I've been, I've been abased. And doesn't matter that my sin has brought me to this place of defeat. And, and it doesn't matter because I know this. And even in the moment of my, uh, of my repentance. See, this is a good thing about repentance. You walk through this door. Let me tell you what's on the other side of it. Hope. I, I will once again. I'll pick back up what I laid down in the last season. What I thought was lost. You're going to find it on the other side. See, the things that I believe God. My promises and the word of God and everything I believe God for. That I laid down in that season. It's over there on the other side. You just got to walk through the door. It's already open. God isn't what, listen, we have hmm. we, it's our approach that matters. It's our approach that matters. I can go begging through that door and just hope we get that. Uh-uh. This door, this door of opportunity, Jesus said it this way, there should be an expectation in your heart. You should know because you've seen enough to know that he is who he says he is. You have seen cancer healed. You have already seen God put back marriages. It might have been yours. You've already seen how God has delivered you from drugs, how God has brought you out of alcohol, how he's brought you out of an illicit sex life and, and those things that are perversion. You've seen how God did that for you. He says, so when you come through this door, no matter what else you might be looking at, you got to know, get through this door. Because on the other side of this door is the expectation that everything you need. Hallelujah. 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 I know I'm taking a few more minutes, but you know what? It's worth it. Jesus. Jesus, bring, bring the door, bring the door right over here. We're going to have to move all of you guys right now. Everybody on this row, wrist row and over there, if y'all pick those chairs up. Now listen, you say, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Well, I could, you want to do it that way and y'all will help him. Pastor Steve believes I should put this on this platform. So let, so I need about four guys, it, it, four guys to move it. It may take six guys to pick it up. Hallelujah. Just bring it up here and put it in the very middle. Thank you. Y'all just get ready. The folks are going to be coming down your way. Now, here's what's going to happen. Now, turn it. I want you to turn it this way. Thank you very much. Y'all scared? Who wants to be first? Get here. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on. No, 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 no. You. <laughs> Listen to me. Out here in this congregation, it's very important. This is a holy moment. Come on, musicians. Yes, absolutely. Now, listen to me. Everything we do is nothing but a symbol unless it is mixed with faith. You understand that? Now, we've been fasting for 21 days. We did not have a big service at the beginning of January because I'd rather have the big service after we've all fasted and prayed. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I'd rather, rather speak of the year that is to come. I'd rather do that after we've positioned ourselves to hear from God. So what we're doing today is a declaration concerning this season, not just the year 2014. I believe that we've entered into the season of the open door. Now, now listen, in, in the, in, in the, on the Jewish calendar, this is the year 5774. 
Now, I won't go into all the technical stuff about it, but in, in Jewish, uh, on the Jewish calendar, and Jewish numbers always have a picture word attributed or connected to them. This is the year of the swinging tent door, is really what it means, the mo movement. And I realized as I was studying that a few months ago that there's movement in the tent door. Well, we have to decide, is that movement because we're coming out or is that movement because we're going in? <laughs> Because you can choose. You can go in or you can come out, right? My point of it is this. This is the year. This is the season. I want to take it out of 2014. I want to take it into the season. We're coming out of the season in which we have experienced the resistance of, uh, of the enemy in so many ways. The warfare has been strong. And there's been much that the enemy's tried to do to defeat you and to cause you to feel like you couldn't believe God for bigger. But this is the time to believe God for the biggest. Not just a little bit bigger. Believe Him for the biggest. What is it you've been believing? What did you lay down in the last season that you got tired of carrying? That you didn't see come to pass? What is, it's time to pick it back up and to speak to that thing and make a declaration. Amen. This is the season. In this room this morning, there are people who are sick in their bodies. There are people who have come to the end of their rope. There are people in here in bondage to drugs, alcohol, in this room. In this room, there are people in bondage to depression and other issues. In this room, right now, there are people who have to walk through the door because Jesus is the door. Amen. There may be somebody here today, even with all of this right here, somebody here today that said, you know what? I, I need to make a fresh commitment. I need to make a, a real commitment to Jesus Christ. I need to ask Him to be my Lord and Savior. I'm tired of living in the old law of sin and death. I'm ready to live in that other realm. If that's you, all our heads are up. Everybody's watching. doesn't matter. If that's you, I want you to wave your hand at me right now. And you say, that's me. No, no, I mean people who will be born again. People who say, I want to be born again. Who are you? Let me see. Right back there. Amen. 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 I see you. Now listen, when you walk through this door, you come through this door and say, believing that you have stepped into another realm. You ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin. You walk through and then we won't talk to you a little bit later, okay? But I don't want to stop the motion of what God is doing. You can have... Yeah, and if you can't get up the stairs, we're going to help you. We're going to get you through it, no matter what, okay? But we're going to go through this way first. Now, here's what I need. I, I, I need my, my pastors and my elders. Y'all get up here first. I want you to walk through, and then I want you to stand on the other side, and I want you to be the cheering squad, the cheerleaders that are going to help them through. Amen on the other side. And I want you to bless them. I want you to release on their life. Amen in Jesus' name. I want you to bless them. Yes! Hallelujah! Yes! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! Right, right, right. Hallelujah! Now, when they come through, I want you to bless them. You lay hands. You do whatever it is. You release a blessing on them. Are you ready to go? Are you ready? You can stand on the stairs. Just stand on the stairs. Let's just go all the way down. Help them down. Hallelujah. Help them down and out. I mean it. You look, lose something on them. Lose something on them. I ain't kidding. That want some oil? Just a minute. I, I want to make sure you get the best experience possible. Amen. Here's oil. Put oil in your hand. Hallelujah. We'll get y'all in a minute. Woo! Hallelujah. I want to do Victor's crown. I want to do Victor's crown. Can we do Victor's crown? Oh, is this all the doors are open? That's all right. Is this all the doors are open? Okay, that's good. Come on, sing it before I let him go. Hallelujah! You better get your expector up. All of the doors will open. Nothing is standing in the way. Every mountain's moving. When words are spoken, chains are broken. All of the doors will open. He's already made a way for me. 
I want, I want to tell you, I want to tell you something. I, I already went through the door three times. One for my past, one for my present, and one for my future. <laughs> I said, you know what? My past has affected my present too long. And it has robbed me of my future too much. I want to walk into the open door that's already been opened in heaven. God's not withholding from us. We're not having to beg God for a blessing. God wants to pour out his blessing upon us. All he's waiting on is us. We, you, you, do you know what happens with your expectation? When you make an expectation on God, it's like this. It's like God, like, like all the blessings of God like are you know, in the heavenly realm. And when you expect, you poke a hole in it. Your expectation literally begins to open up the heavens so that all that's there just pours out on you. Now the precedent for that is in Malachi where he says, you know, test me and see. Tithe and bring your offerings into the storehouse. He said, then test me and see if I won't open a window and pour out blessings that you cannot. So our obedience to tithe opens up the heavens. Our obedience to the word, our obedience to live holy, our obedience to deny the things that have held us in bondage opens up the heavens. Hallelujah. This is the season for fulfillment. We heard it declared by more than one prophet. What does that mean? Everything's going to come easy? No. It just means that it's attainable. And our expectation is that if we will believe God, that he will be the God of his word to us. Amen. I believe that we're about to explode in worship. We have always been a worshiping congregation. But I believe that we're going to see things begin to happen in greater dimension than we've ever seen. When you, I believe that when they pick up instruments to play, they'll start prophesying like they have never. They won't even know what got a hold. I believe that rehearsals will not just be times to practice songs, but the worship, our, our own worship leaders are about to go through a door that's open in heaven. And we will go with them. Amen. I do believe that, and I, it is essential that we support that. I believe that our tech team is about to overflow and swell with people who want to be a part of the worship experience at Epic Church. You are needed. You see these shirts we're wearing today? This is Dream Team shirts. This is, you know, there's a whole bunch of us that didn't wear them, but we honor the people today. That's why we wear these. We're honoring the people who make this happen. The people who do not get paid and make this happen. Except, of course, they learned a secret a long time ago that you still get paid. Because God always pays. God always takes care of his own. Amen. But you know, it's time. I'm, I'm going to give you, I, I guess I'll give you a little preview right now. We have to expand. You see that. I mean, we, we have to. And uh, we're excited about this. God's uh, given us a, a plan. And so... What we're about to do is just listen through the whole thing. Right next to us in there is a, a children's church where we have kids praise. Now it's a sanctuary we can put 100 people in. So what we're about to do is shift. We're going to take kids praise and they're going to go to a temporary room. It, nice, nice temporary room. And we're going to build a new children's church. Isn't that exciting? We're very excited. In a few weeks, I'll have sketches so you can see what we're going to do. But what we're going to do then in that room, it already has a screen. It has a $40,000 projector in it. We're going, to start, we're going to expand our Sunday morning worship experience so that we will have two rooms at the same time. Everybody seeing the same thing, experiencing the same thing. Rather than go to two services right now, we're going to do this. Our church is kind of like... Um, we kind of don't do well when we separate ourselves. We, we kind of all belong together. And so this gives us an opportunity to worship in two sanctuaries right next to each other. 
and have that big screen and all of that. It's awesome. We're so excited. And what that's also going to mean is we're going to upgrade our broadcast capabilities and all that. So now what goes out on the broadcast and on the web, web and all of that is going to be uh, taken several notches up. And uh, we're going to see, and so that, because we have to have a broadcast mix over there, so you understand, we're about to professionalize all this stuff. And uh, you know what I mean by that. And we're going, and because we're growing, we've got to have room to grow. You see that. I'm excited about it. It, it, it is an awesome opportunity that we all have. Know this, your children are not getting stuck off in some place. You know us and our kids. And this gives us the opportunity now to build what it is we want to build for them. And, uh, and so we're, take, we're just going to do first things first here and take care of that. Uh, our kids need a place. Uh, I, I, we're, in, we're still got this back sanctuary. We're believing God for it. We're still, we're still, but we're not dead. We're move, there's movement that's going on. You understand that? So worship, if you, if you can play instruments or if you have, and I'm not just talking about people who like to sing. I'm talking about people who know how to sing. You know, it's all right. He, he loves a joyful noise. But when you're on a microphone, it's better if it's more than a noise. But if that's in your heart, I want you to find me, find, find Seth, find, you say, okay, here I am. I'd like to be at least a part, we, whatever. If you have ever wanted to learn how to do something or you already know how to do something in the tech area, run cameras, do all of that stuff, you know, there's lots of things that happen here. We can teach you if you don't, if you have a willing heart. But y'all, nothing happens in this place without the people who wear these blue shirts. And even the people don't have them on today who, you know, in spirit wear these blue shirts. We have a wonderful dream team and we bless you today in Jesus' name. We're going to send this worship team through this door. I want to make sure that as we do, that all of us are in agreement, that we are praying for them, that we're believing God for them. They have, they have sown and sown and sown, and the time for reaping is at hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I sweating? Y'all are so sweet. I don't even care if I sweat anymore. That's what happens when you turn 61. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to put your hands out. I want the worship team to all be down here together. Y'all get together right here. We have a couple that are missing right now, but you, all of them. So right now, I want you to put your hands out towards them. I want you to speak a blessing over them. Just bless them. Say, blessed in Jesus' name. Blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this worship team. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the open door in heaven. I thank you, Lord, that they will bring heaven to earth as they worship. Hallelujah. I thank you that their own personal worship is about to go through the roof, through the stratosphere, oh God. The heavens are opening. Thank you, Lord, that you're adding to them now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the expansion in Jesus' name. All right, worship team, I want you to come. I need all the pastors and elders over here. I want you to lay hands on them. I want you to get them good. So can you sing that? Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Come on, you tech overcome. team from up in the booth. Come on down. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You've overcome. You've overcome. Every high thing must come Amen. down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You are the victor's crown. Here comes the tag team. You overcome. Come on. You overcome. Come on. Every high thing must, must come, come down. down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You are the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, tag team. You come are on. always fighting for us. All right. Heaven's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My delight is Oh, I see you being doubled. You I see you being doubled in Jesus' name. You're my help and my defender. Hallelujah. You're my friend and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship. Hallelujah. You. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. 
Whatever you left on the other side of this door, when you walk through, do not pick that thing back up. Every you walk in freedom and liberty, down. knowing Every that you are an overcomer today in the name of Jesus. We're going upward and onward. Upward Every and onward. Oh, children's church is Every coming. Shall be broken. Oh, Pastor Steve, you know, I went through. You overcome. I, I didn't wait on him. Every high I, thing I must already been through down. this. Every number stronghold four. shall be broken. You are the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You are the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Amen. Now listen, you 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 can't. I, I I write in the beginning of this the book that we're giving out tonight about how you keep your breakthrough. Whatever it took for you to get there, it'll take for you to stay there and more. You can't start doing something different and then you're going to keep what it, <laughs> you got to keep doing what you did. Whatever dedication, whatever you had to lay down, whatever you had to consecrate, whatever you had to do, you got to keep doing that. That's how you keep your victory. Amen. I pray this year, this season, this, this moment would be a time when we as a body would so encourage one another. That it would not matter. No matter what any of us are going through, there's enough strength. Hallelujah enough strength to keep us and get us over. Don't you love Pastor Latricia, our children's pastor? And our nursery, amen, our nursery's coming in. Miss Stephanie, who teaches. All right, hallelujah. They're going through the door with us. Nobody's staying behind. Hallelujah. Oh, this is our... This is our four and five year olds in our nursery. <laughs> Go through the door. Go through the door. You <laughs> come on. Come on, Miss Deisha. Hallelujah. Miss Deisha uh, 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 oversees our nursery. And oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 I didn't remember. Hallelujah. Yeah, last year, I didn't know. I was just informed. Last year, we had two babies born, uh, and, and Elijah and, and Justice were born uh, today. And last year, when they were born, there was a prophetic word that came, and it said what? What did it say? That a flow of grace was going to come to this house as a result of these children, you know, the, the names and all of that. And it's one year to the day today. Isn't that awesome? I, I received that as from the Lord. Now here, now listen, listen, do one thing for me. I know everybody's ready to go out and eat, but you know, just wait. Kids' praise is coming. Let them know. Let them know what you think about. Yay! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Walk through the door. Yes, we bless you now in Jesus' name. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Glory to God. They just keep coming. They just keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. <laughs> keep coming. All right. Hallelujah. Oh, there's more. Keep coming. Keep on coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God.
God bless you. God bless you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Are you the end? One more. Hallelujah. Caleb already came through. He's got his hair. He has. Yes, he did. There's more. All right. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Thank God. Thank God for these children and what God is doing. In every area, every realm, in every place, I'm telling you the Spirit of God, there's a lifting in this house. There's a lifting in your life in Jesus' name. Our pastors and elders are here. And, and we're here to pray with you and believe with you and to speak a word over your life of encouragement and agreement. Hallelujah. And so, if you'd like for us to pray with you, we'll be here to do so. You can make your way this way. We're going to formally dismiss you now, and thank you. I know it went a long time. I, you don't have to tell me. I know. But let me, let me ask a question. Was it worth it, really? It's worth it. Sometimes, just sometimes, you got to take time to do what, what, what it takes. Amen. Same God who changed you and turned your life around and continues to change you is the same God who wants to help you change somebody else's life. Go out and change somebody's life this week. God bless you as you go. If you're meeting with uh, for the Easter Productions right down here. Bye. Tonight, 6 o'clock. We'll see you.